uh, inclusion, innovation, and uh, transformation. That's, that's the theme of this panel. Uh, this came in like when I quite soon to after I joined the company, and the entire element was around uh, we believe in having our employees bring our best self to work, uh, whole self to work, you know, mind, body, heart, and soul. Uh, we've got over 170,000 employees in India. And, and, and this is one philosophy that we want to kind of you know propagate uh, as as Accenture in India and also Accenture globally. Uh, as we had this this philosophy, we wanted to check uh, how are people feeling. You know, as they bring their whole self, have they also felt excluded? Have, have they felt an unconscious bias? And we, and we started a, we started a conversation saying, why don't you uh, come and tell us? Uh, have you ever felt excluded at the workplace? And this conversation, this simple idea, you know, just a conversation on saying that, let's understand what, what people have gone through, became a momentum where uh, all over the world, it started in the US, it came to India, came to other parts of the world, we had many conversations around this. And then the innovative idea came in, okay, we've got conversations now from different people on what bias have they felt or when have they felt excluded. How can we make a difference with this? How, how can we transform our company? How can we make people even more uh, aware? And, and then saying grow, you know, so one, one is growth as a product, one is growth as individuals. How can we do that? So, so we put all these, some of these conversations together uh, into a video, and I'll just uh, you know, play that in some time. Uh, spoke about it to many individuals in small groups, uh, started something called the Inclusive Leader Workshop, where we trained about 20,000 uh, 20, people you know, around inclusion, and we got our leadership team and many employees uh, to sign a pledge uh, about, and, and the thing is, hashtag inclusion starts with I. Uh, so inclusion, of course, starts with I, inclusion also starts with I as an individual, uh, and what difference do I make you know, as an individual uh, in, in, in this entire process? Uh, and once we did it internally, what, what we felt was uh, what we found internally uh, could also help and impact people externally. So we posted this on uh, on YouTube, and many organizations, uh, you know, watched it, used this, uh, and, and we pledges from uh, from them as well. So, so I think that's a story that I, I wanted to share about. Uh, Inclusion, innovation, and transformation. Um, so let me let me just start off by a little bit sharing on my personal journey because I believe both innovation and inclusion is a journey. It doesn't start, it doesn't stop, it continues. I think that's a very important point. Um, so first and foremost, I grew up as a little kid in Hong Kong, where about 95% of the population just looks like me. So I never really thought about inclusion or diversity from that standpoint. However, I'm very, very fortunate to have grew up in a family who absolutely espouse everything about diversity, and in particular, diversity of thought. So uh, just an example, uh, my mom, as I, I remember really as a little kid, she would always say things like, you know what, I mean, Hong Kong at the time is still part of the British uh, 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 community, if you will. And one day we were watching on the Queen's celebration on her, uh, on her birthday. And she just said, you know what, you know what, I, I, I really wouldn't want to be a royalty because if I'm a royal, if I'm a royalty, I cannot just go downstairs and have a snack that I want and won't come back up. That's the kind of diversity of thoughts that I think that is really important regardless which aspect and what spectrum of diversity and inclusion you're thinking about. Uh, I think that we started, you know, very traditionally on gender, on race, on, on culture and the likes, but there's so many other aspects and I wanted to just hi highlight as an example three of them. Um, so one of my dear colleagues uh, from my one of my alma mater, which is IBM, which is where I really learned to be a very inclusive leader, uh, is talking about inclusion from a technology standpoint, accessibility. You know, if, if and, and in fact, I really want to congratulate you, Reddit, on the board and we were exchanging cards, it's having the Braille uh, on your card is making it accessible. What do we do, what, do we, what can we do about that? That's accessibility inclusion. 
The other part would be, and I think there's no other country that depicts this more than India, which is there are so many villages that there's just no other technology. There's no other banks or others, but yet you transact. And that's financial inclusion. It's all those aspects we need to think about. So yes, it's all about us individually. It's all about the collection of individuals, Absolutely. which is what communities and the globe and the world all happens. Wow. So that's my first point is that it really is a journey and we need to open the spectrum of what we mean by diversity and inclusion. And if you don't do any of them, I guarantee you innovation and growth will not come. So the company I work for is called UiPath. They are in software robotics. The origins are quite interesting. It was started by somebody who, you know, studied in a country, you know, Romania, then went to the U.S., worked for Microsoft. But after five years, sort of, you know, stopped and said, "What am I doing? I'm part of another large corporation. Where do I make a difference?" And then he took a break and went back to his own country. You know, rented a small place and hired, you know, nine other graduates from colleges and started to work on something. And it's just just the desire to do something, and they didn't necessarily have a roadmap. And he tells us this story all the time. And so many times in, the, in their journey, they said, you know, maybe it's not worth it. But somehow they sustained, and then they they were at it at 10 years, you know. And then they broke through, and that's when they took the company overseas and you know to other countries and so on and so forth. Why I tell this story is that many times we think of these ideas coming from very developed countries. You know, Romania isn't very different from a country like India. It's a somewhat of a you know, third world country. So there is inherent diversity in thought. And here was a technologist who built this, but at a very beginning he made this you know, sort of his, his premise that our advantage in our business is not going to be technology alone. It's going to be culture and what we do and how we do. And very uniquely, he decided being yeah. humble as a value so, of the company. So I think what I hear him say is probably the seeds define the tree, yeah. right? So we, we cannot say that that it belongs only to the large corporations. Yeah, yeah. So we are, if you sow the right seeds, we are now tool. in top 5% of you know, companies all, with diversity all, in the all, US. All parts to you, maybe your role model will continue. Thank you. And Mohit, coming you know, to when you. When I was at Genpact and I have colleagues here, I, I truly believe that it's uh, women leaders drive higher EQ and EQ then drives la a higher amount of impact in what you do, right? Whether it is about including leaders or including uh, inclusion of diverse people into the system, right? Because EQ factor is so important in what you do, right? Generally on the alpha male, their EQ factors are low, right? So I think if you have women leaders in your team, you can drive a higher level of impact with the EQ that they generate. Would you say the same thing if this was a men's conference? So absolutely, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. I, 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 I firmly believe in it. Uh, and, uh, you know, when I used to work at Genpad, I think I had some seven, eight women leaders. Yeah. So, so I think it's, it's a real f enabling factor uh, in, a, in a big way, in a long way. You know, and when, when, when I look at today, when we are now starting to build a business, it's pretty interesting um, as to how when you work with different people around the world, which today are not part of your team, right, because you are you're building an organization and the diversity of thought that they bring uh, is pretty interesting. Hi, first sprint. I'm going to come to you. Yes, ma'am, quick comments. Um, I, I, I beg to differ in terms of equality. Yeah. Equality is passive. Mm. I think it's about reaching to potentials. Sure. It makes no difference of who you are or what gender you are, but you have to believe and push the potential. Equality means that you are just equalizing. Equalizing means you stop optimizing. You got to push up, you got to go beyond.